Good afternoon folks, I thought I'd um, just do a bit of a short video intro on a throttle body systems used on W5AM Guzzies. These are the cart bikes with the um, exception of the Bellagio use this system. Um, anyway, I've got a pair of throttle bodies here and I'm going to just go through and try and explain what various parts of them do and most importantly what can be touched and what shouldn't be touched while you're um, doing a tune-up on the bike okay right well here we are um, sitting in front of me here I have a uh, bright shiny brand new pair of 50 mil throttle bodies these are the ones that are used on the 1200 series um, of cart bikes um, <clears throat> the principles used on these are exactly the same as the smaller ones used on the uh, the earlier models. Um, but the thing is that these are the ones I've got because I've bought myself a spare pair. Um, they are quite a delicate item, um, surprisingly, um, given the fact that they are on a motorcycle. But uh, the thing is, if you look after them, they will last really well. Um, the problem is that many people do things to their bikes that uh, don't help their longevity and also may mess around with things that they uh, shouldn't really be touching at all. Now, to start off with, let's just get a general overview of what we are looking at. Obviously, these two items here are the actual throttle bodies themselves. When... Um, when the throttle is opened, it moves this cam plate here and you can see the uh, throttle butterflies move and open to allow more air into the engine. We are at the moment looking in from the back of the throttle bodies. Um, from the uh, left hand side, you where the cables come in at the top to operate the uh, butterflies, you have a rod that passes down through the throttle body on which the left hand butterfly is positioned and it goes down through to this device at the bottom which is uh, in fact the pivot which incorporates um, a bell crank arrangement that basically makes this linkage rod here um, adjust the same amount for or it keeps the uh, the opening and closing of the um, throttle bodies uh, plates equal <coughs> when you are adjusting them for balance. Um, if you were to just use a direct co correction uh, or connection without the um, bell crank, you would find that one side would open more than the other as you adjusted the, adjusted the balance. But, okay, let's go on from there. What we have here, what I'm pointing to on this. This is very important. This is the throttle stop screw. And as you can see, it's sealed in with paint. If I turn the throttle bodies round, you can actually see that the, as I move the throttle plate, this bar down at the bottom here is actually resting against the screw that goes through here on this spot welded uh, nut at the back. Now this is very very important that this is left alone. This is one of the commonest problems that I find with bikes that come through my workshop is the fact that somebody has decided that either their bike is idling too fast or their it's idling too slow. And they've thought, well, if I move the throttle plate by moving that screw, then um, the idle speed will increase or decrease. Unfortunately, that's not the way it works. And in fact, if you move that screw, you effectively screw up the entire fueling. Um, now we'll cover that again a bit later but just for the moment don't touch that screw likewise 
here on the rod that connects both the um, both of the throttle bodies the linkage rod you will see that the ball joints here uh, at either end are also locked and sealed with yellow paint now <clears throat> they too should never be moved when you are going to be doing the balance you don't use this rod you use the screw that adjusts the bell crank mechanism here and if I turn the throttle body around again maybe even turn it up you can see on the bell crank mechanism down here there is another screw here with a flat blade screw in it it's actually got a got I think a, uh, an eight mil hex on it as well but uh, a uh, flat blade screw now that is sealed with paint the thing is that that you do move during the tuning process so the fact that that has got paint on it is um, a bit confusing um, because it will get damaged and moved but the thing is if you're looking at purchasing a second-hand motorcycle um, do make sure that the paint on the Throttle stop screw and also on the linkage rod ball joints is intact. Now, <clears throat> there is also on the other throttle body also a throttle stop screw. That's where you can see this little yellow blob of paint here. That should never be touched either, but the good news is because it's on the inside of the throttle body, it's not usually seen by people and tends to get left alone. Okay, now we'll get on to some of the other features of these throttle bodies. Right, having turned them upside down, if you look on both of the throttle bodies, you will see that here and on the other throttle body here, You have two brass screws. If you look at the top of them, look at them from the top, you'll see that they have a five millimeter hex inside them and what looks like some sort of orifice in the bottom. There's one there, there's one there. And oh dear, I'm afraid we're about to be helped by one of my feline companions. Um, the thing is that these are the two air bleed screws that you use when balancing the throttle bodies you use them for setting the manifold depression setting the manifold depression at idle once you have completed the um the high speed um high speed throttle body balance um we'll come back to that in a minute looking down now on the top of the throttle bodies you can see a cat, which is very annoying. Um, this device here in the middle is what is commonly known as the stepper motor. This is an air over idle device. It's controlled by the ECU. You will see that underneath the stepper motor, from each side, there is a hose that goes to the individual throttle bodies on either side. Now, what this does is it actually delivers air. It has a piston that moves up and down. Air enters from the clean side of the air box through this hose uh, spigot here, which is connected by a hose to the clean side of the air box. Now, the idle speed is hard coded into the ECU. Um, on the 8-valve models, it's set at uh, 1250 RPM, um, plus or minus 50 RPM. And what will happen is that the ECU monitors how, um, how the, what the idle speed is, how fast it's idling. If the idle speed drops for any reason, then it will add more air by opening the valve in the stepper motor. This is an elec electrical connector which is connected to the ECU, allowing more air in. More air in leans the mixture out, leaner mixture 
high arrival. If it notices that the, um, the idle speed is, uh, is rising too high, um, it will reverse the procedure. It will close the stepper motor valve and therefore deliver less air to the throttle bodies, richening up the mixture at idle and consequently um, richer mixture, lower idle. You can change the target idle speed, but only by pulling the map out of the ECU and altering it with a program like Tuna Pro and then reinserting it. There is no way that you can physically change the idle speed safely. So don't even think about trying it. This device on the top of the right hand throttle body, this is the TPS or the throttle position sensor. And this is the device that gauges how much or allows the ECU to gauge how much air is going through the throttle bodies and therefore how much um, fuel should be added to keep the mixture correct. If you look through the open throttle body, you can actually see that there are drillings in the wall of the um, choke of the throttle body. Now, that is the air bleed passage, which is controlled by that brass screw with the hole in it down the bottom. What that allows air to do is to bypass, bypass the um, throttle plate when the throttle plate is effectively closed. It is always ever so slightly open, but when, when you're at idle, it's effectively closed. Um, and to maintain idle, a certain amount of air will be bypassed. And to balance it at idle, you use these screws, which you open and close with a five mil allen key they can be a bit fiddly to get to on um, these model throttle bodies but it's not a big deal on the earlier um, throttle bodies used on the 1100 versions and the pushrod motored 1200s um, they are in a lot easily more easily accessible position they're actually on the outside of the throttle body here there are what looked like two casting tubes and the, I believe it's the front one has the um, has the air bleed screw in that which does make it easier and you use a flat bladed screwdriver to um, get in to do those. Right now if you're going to be tuning a W5AM cart bike once again with the exception of the Bellagio the method of doing this is just incredibly simple. Um, why it continues to present people with problems after they've been making the bikes for some 16 years I do not know. In fact they've been out of production now for oh, 2004 years but um, I'm still getting them coming through my workshop um, having been comprehensively ruined by people playing around not realizing what they're doing. Um, basically though it's very very simple set your valves four thou in the six thou exhaust is the way to go um, start the engine warm the engine up to greater than 60 degrees and then close both of the air bleeds that's these screws there that one and that one we can pointed out before close them and then using the throttle hold you've connected up your manometers to um to your um inlet ports on your um inlet manifolds you then hold the throttle open to so the engine's running at about oh three and a half thousand to four thousand rpm and at that point, using a flat bladed screwdriver in the bell crank screw, which is that one right in the center of the picture right at the moment, you use the um, bell crank screw to balance the manifold vacuum at three and a half to 4,000 RPM. Once you've got that balanced, you just let the throttle snap shut 
and you kill the engine with the kill switch. After you've done that, you use your diagnostic tooling. I use Guzzi Diag. What you do is you go into up here, you can see you've got view and you can go down and there's actors. Now, because it's not actually plugged into a bike, I can't actually pull that up. But if you hit actors, it will bring up another uh, drop down menu and it's in there. It says reset TPS. It's one click of the um, mouse button and it's done. Um, after that, uh, you can restart the uh, engine and whichever side has the highest manifold vacuum at idle, all you have to do is open the air bleed on that side until equilibrium is um, restored. And that is it. That is all you have to do. Um, when you're moving the bell crank screw, it moves the bell crank, which will move the linkage rod here. And that brings the uh, throttle plates on each of the throttle bodies back into um, back into equilibrium at that high high point. When the um, throttle is then closed, you then use a small amount of air bypassed through one or other of the throttle stops, uh, the uh, the air bleed screws, to equalise the pressure at um, uh, to equalise the pressure at um, at idle. And that really is it. Um, <coughs> after that, um, anything that needs to be done after that is going to be mechanical. It's not going to be a tuning issue. By far the commonest issues um, we have rela related to poor running of um, W5AM guzzies are down to people having messed around with the throttle bodies without knowing what they're doing. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of this vid video, the throttle bodies are quite delicate. Um, they will wear if they are abused. Um, and one of the biggest problems that is quite often encountered is that people will believe that if they put in a labyrinth style air filter like a K&N or one of the other um, similar types of reusable filled air filters, they will get more power because, um, you know, it'll pass more air and they'll be able to put more fuel in and yada, yada, yada. Uh, look, just think about this for a minute. A 120 brake horsepower Tuono um, breathes through a smaller conventional paper filter than sits in a Grisso or Stelvio's airbox. Do you honestly think that a wheezing lump like a Guzzi is going to need to breathe any more than it can get through a standard filter? Uh, my opinion is no. <clears throat> the other thing that... Um, tends to happen with labyrinth filters is they don't filter very well. You'll find a lot more grime getting through the um, through the filter. Grime getting through the filter gets into the airbox and consequently through the throttle bodies. And um, one of the biggest wear points in the throttle bodies is the bushes that the spindles um, that the butterflies sit on go through. Um, this can be exacerbated by overfilling the engine with oil. Um, if you consistently fill your engine to the high mark on the dipstick, you will find it's got far too much in. As it has too much in, it'll pump some out. And where does it pump it out? Through the breather system. And then the it overwhelms the breather system. It can't condense it all and send it back to the sump. And some of it will get pumped into the airbox. Uh, once in the airbox, especially if you've got a K&N type filter, you will find um, that it will combine into a nasty sludge with the um, the dirt that's getting through the K&N filter. And you have a wonderful grinding paste, which has a truly wonderful effect on the, um, the longevity of your throttle bodies. 
Please, please, please just use the standard conventional filters, change them often. Um, they will do the job far, far better than anything on the aftermarket. Um, the other things that tend to happen is that people will play with the throttle stop screws. Now, if they play with the throttle stop screw, um, if you're lucky and they haven't reset the TPS, then you can just wind it back using the screw until the TPS reading um, is where it should be using um, using Guzzi Diag or whatever other form of um, diagnostic software you use. If unfortunately the TPS soft uh, TPS has been reset, it um, then throws out um, the reading and you it makes it very 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 hard to try and re-establish the baseline setting. The TPS reading is used by the the ECU in an interpretive way. It's not a it's not a an absolute flat voltage figure, and obviously if you move the um, move the uh, linkage rod or if you move the throttle stop screw and then uh, reset the TPS, what you're doing is you're now making it think that it that the um, throttle is in one position when it is in fact in the other and because the only way that the um, W5AM system knows how much fuel to deliver is through the um, throttle plate angle of the TPS this isn't counting air temperature or engine temperature but um, the only way that it knows is through the TPS angle and if it's not getting the correct TPS or it isn't interpreting the TPS angle correctly then it's not going to put the right amount of fuel in and yes um, one of these nice new shiny sets of throttle bodies like I've been using for this demonstration will set you back a cool $2,000 so it's best not to mess around with them if you don't know what you're doing um, okay, I'll try and assemble this into some sort of video and hopefully it will be helpful to you.